What's going on guys? My name is Halt and I'd like to welcome you back to the Ride to the Moon. It looks like it's getting further away. Uh, it's getting smaller so I might need to check with my uh, navigation guy here to make sure that uh, we're still on the right track. I'm sure we will eventually get there but uh, right now we're kinda heading in the wrong direction. Anyways, today we are gonna take a look at the Antminer L3++ from Bitmain. Um, in this first video I'm just going to concentrate on the hardware setup um, and then I'm going to make an additional video um, which covers the, the software side of things. So let's get to it. Okay, so this is what you see when you pull the unit out of the box. Uh, this device is the L3++, which is designed to only mine on the script algorithm. Um, and it is an ASIC miner, so what that means is uh, ASIC stands for Application Specific Integrated Circuit. Um, so basically it, uh, it does one job really, really well. And in this case, it mines on the script algorithm really well. Um, so let's take a look at some quick specs. Uh, there are four total hashing boards um, and 72 hashing chips on each board for a total of 288 hashing chips. The total advertised hash rate is 580 mega hashes per second. Now I can tell you that uh, I have been averaging right around that uh, 580 mega hashes per second on both of my, my miners, so their advertised hash rate is pretty accurate. The total wattage um, at 220 volts is about 942 watts. Now I am running at uh, 110 volts currently and uh, I definitely use uh, more wattage than than what's advertised there because um, lower voltage uh, will increase the the wattage there but we'll take a look at that uh, you can see the weight there noise level I, I feel is a little under advertised um, I think it, as you'll see in the video a little bit later on here um, it, it definitely gets louder than 76 decibels so um, yep, size, warranty, there are ways to avoid the warranty. Um, we will look at those um, ways to kind of avoid that um, unless you want to get uh, get some more hash rate out of the, the miner itself um, and avoid the warranty, that's that's up to you. Um, a bandwidth usage, that's, that's a question that gets asked a lot. Um, and the, the good news is these devices use very little bandwidth, um, about two megabytes per hour. Um, which equates to about 1.4 gigabytes per month. Uh, just to kind of put that in perspective, the average American uses about um, 7 gigabytes per month on their cell phones. So just to, just to kind of give you an idea of how little bandwidth these devices actually use. Let's take a look at the front of the device. So you can see the top of the 120 millimeter intake fan there. Um, there's also an exhaust fan on the opposite side. Um, I did want to point out the arrows um, that help you determine the airflow of the fans themselves. It's just helpful when you're looking for a, a permanent location for your, your miner there. Um, above the fan you can see an IP report button. So you can go to Bitman's website and they have some software that you can download. Um, you open it up and you go back to your miner and uh, press this IP report button for about five seconds and you'll get a pop-up telling you what your IP address is. Um, and we will talk about that a little bit more in the next video. To the right of the IP report button is the Ethernet port. Um, then you have your fault in normal light there. Uh, you never really want to see that fault light. Um, and then you have your reset button all the way on the right hand side there if you want to reset your um, your ant miner to factory defaults. Next we'll take a look at the top side of the L3++. 
You can see the logic board has one 6-pin PCI Express power connector and four ribbon cables connecting to four hashing boards. Each hashing board has two 6-pin PCI Express power connectors, which means it'll take a total of nine power connectors to power this device. To stay on the topic of power, let's take a look at the APW3++. Now, this must be purchased separately from the amp miner, but is reasonably priced around $105. Um, this power supply can output about 1600 watts at 220 volts and 1200 watts at 110 volts. Uh, one thing to kind of keep in mind, uh, this does not come with a power cord. Um, and when you purchase a power cord, you will want to make sure that it is a heavy gauge wire. Um, I'm personally using a just a six foot long 14 gauge trip light power cord uh, that I will link in the description. Let's go ahead and plug in the power connectors. As you can see, I'm extremely efficient at this because I've done it so many times. One quick little tip I did want to give you is that if you're using the APW3++, you should have one power connector left over um, after you get everything plugged in. So let's do a visual check across the top here to make sure everything looks okay. We are finally ready to power this thing up. But before you do, uh, always check your power connectors to make sure everything feels secure. Now let's go ahead and plug in our ethernet cable. And let's plug her in. I wanted to take a second here to explain what all these devices are. So starting on the left, we have an app that measures decibel levels. Uh, right next to that, there is a kilowatt, which uh, measures total wattage. And then at the bottom right, I just threw up a clock to kind of give you an idea of how long it takes this uh, device to start hashing. So I'm going to speed through this a bit until the fans really ramp up so you can kind of get an idea for the amount of sound this device makes. Now let's continue to speed through this a little bit until we get to about the two minute mark. This is about how long it takes for the device to, uh, to really start hashing. You will notice here the wattage on the kilowatt peak out at around 980 watts. This is about the max that I've seen um, this device hit. Just to reiterate, I am running at 110 volts and not 220. Now let's see what happens when you unplug it. You'll notice that the fans and the power supply keep running for, for several seconds before everything shuts off. So to end the video, I just want to talk a little bit about profitability and how much total Litecoin you can mine in a month. So on average, I mine about one Litecoin per miner. I think that's, uh, that's pretty solid at uh, current difficulty. Um, let's take a look at profits. To do so, we're going to go to whattomine.com. And up at the top here, you'll see I've selected ASIC. And, uh, and I've selected the script algorithm. That's what we're mining. And I average around 580 mega hashes per second and each miner takes roughly 900 watts um, per miner on average and I pay 0 0.096 cents per kilowatt hour uh, per power. So let's go ahead and hit calculate there and scroll down. You'll see right now my profits are about a dollar a day. So not the greatest. Um, 
it, it seems like, you know, I've, I've been uh, looking in a few discords for crypto mining and uh, different forums, and the general consensus is, oh, I'm not making any money with these miners. I'm just going to shut them off. Uh, you know, the profits aren't very good. But I, I think you kind of have to look at the big picture. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm making one Litecoin per miner per month. So, and I have two of them, so 24 Litecoin a year. I, I, I find that pretty impressive because I think that the coin is eventually going to moon. And uh, so, you know, I'm just hodling the coin. Um, I'm not looking to turn profits super quick. Um, you know, it, it's great if the, the price of the coin goes up like crazy, I mean, even tomorrow, but who knows, it could take a year, a couple of years, whatever. I, I'm just going to hold it until we do get there. If you just look at the, I mean, I'm a believer in Litecoin, so if you just look at the adoption uh, of Litecoin, just over the past, you know, several months, it's been insane. So I think we will eventually get there. Um, so one other thing I wanted to, to kind of touch on here is um, uh, crypto mining has also forced me to learn about other things um, like electricity in, in general. Um, I've had to run a dedicated circuit to my basement or to, to kind of run these miners. Um, I'm luck, lucky enough to have a dad that's knowledgeable in that area, and he's been able to, to kind of teach me um, about, um, about how, how all that works. But, um, you know, voltage, amperage, wattage, all that fun stuff. But um, I, just, I just find that interesting that, um, that this, this it's, I mean, I look at it as kind of a hobby, but it... Uh, it's forced me to learn about things that will help me um, in the future as well. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, but anyways, that's all I have for you guys today. Um, I don't know if you noticed or not in the videos, but Yoda was in the background. You can kind of see his, his feet in the background there. Um, he's a pretty big fan of Litecoin. And, uh, I mean, it's kind of inevitable because, he, I mean, he is on the light side, so... But uh, anyways, thank you guys for watching. And uh, if you found this video informative, um, I encourage you to go ahead and hit that thumbs up. Um, and if you're interested in more content like this, uh, obviously there's going to be a part two to this video. But I do plan on um, continuing to create crypto mining content um, here in the future. Um, so I encourage you to to please uh, subscribe to the channel, and uh, I hope you guys stick around for the ride to the moon.